Hi, I'm Alan Downey, and this is an introduction to Colab for people who are new to Colab, Jupyter, and Python. Colab is an online environment where you can run a Jupyter notebook in your browser, and in the notebook you can run Python code and other languages. The good thing is that you don't have to install anything, but you do need a mental model of what's going on, or there are things that might be surprising and confusing. I should say I'm not affiliated with Google or Colab, so this is not an official video. I teach at Olin College, and I use Colab in some of my classes and with some of my books. So I hope this is useful, but I can't guarantee that it's error-free, especially if things change in the future. I'll use examples from Elements of Data Science, which is a new curriculum I'm developing for data science in Python for people with no programming experience. Suppose you've got a computer, and you're running a browser, and I give you a link to a Jupyter Notebook that's on GitHub. When you click on the link, you open the notebook and you see it in your browser. So let's see what that looks like. This is the web page for Elements of Data Science, and this is a link to the first notebook. So if I click on this link, it goes to Colab, it loads the notebook, and I can see it on the screen. When you start running the notebook, the first time you execute a code cell, Colab creates a runtime, which contains random access memory, which is RAM, and disk space. So we can see what that looks like. I'm going to use Shift-Enter to execute the first cell, which is text, so it just formats the text. It doesn't actually run any code. Until I get to here, this is the first cell that contains any code. It's very simple, it's just an integer. But when I run this cell, I get a window that tells me that this notebook was not written by Google, but we can run it anyway. And what's happening right now is it's creating the runtime on Colab. And we can see in the upper right here, it shows the RAM and the disk that we are now connected to. So your browser is connected to the Colab runtime, and whenever you run a cell, your browser is going to send a message to the runtime, it gets a response, and it displays the result. You would be amazed at the number of computers and the amount of computation that happens every time you run a cell, but mostly you don't need to know about the details. One thing you should know is that that runtime is on a computer that's owned by Google. So as a practical matter, you need network connectivity. If you lose your network, you won't be able to run code. Also, you should read Google's privacy policy and terms of service to make sure that they're appropriate for your project. Importantly, the notebook that you see is a copy of mine. So anything that you change in your notebook is not going to affect my notebook on GitHub or anybody else. You own it. But that also means that if you make any changes, they're not being saved unless you tell Colab to save your notebook. Let's see what that looks like. There are a few different places that you can save, but the easiest one is to use this button, which copies the notebook into your Google Drive. So when I press that, it tells me that it's creating a copy. And now I have a new, new notebook, and notice the name of the file says that this is a copy of the original file name. What you might want to do is give it a more meaningful name, maybe your own name or something like that. You can name this notebook whatever you want. And now, while you are running this notebook, the changes that you make are getting saved periodically. If you make a big change and you're nervous, you can also press Control S or select Save from the file menu to save explicitly. Now, what's going to happen when you run a line of code like x equals 5? It creates a new variable named x and a value 5. The variable and the value are in RAM on Colab. If you leave the notebook idle for a while, it disconnects from the runtime. And you'll see a screen that looks like this. So if you go to lunch and you come back, 
you might see this that says that your connection has timed out. And what that means is that that runtime is gone. That has disappeared. But you still have the notebook, so don't worry. You haven't lost anything. You can load that notebook back if you need to. You can load it from Drive. And then when you run the first cell, you'll create a new runtime. And that new runtime will not have the variables and values that you had before until you run the notebook again. When you run the notebook again, you'll get those same variables and values back. That's enough to get you started for now. You might want to use Colab and just get more comfortable with it before you watch the rest of this video.